God, thank you so much for this time together, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day, the community we have that we have with one another. Lord, you are the giver of life. You're the one who has planned out all of our destinies. You know all of our transgressions, all of our flaws, all of our strengths, Lord. And I pray that each one of us here would be able to come to you with a completely open heart, unashamed, unafraid. And Lord, that we are able to present ourselves before you in our truest self so we can open up our minds and open up our souls to be able to hear exactly what your faith can do, Lord. I ask that every single person can be touched by the glory of your promise and your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
been there for us um, every step of the way, even though we would just lose our view sometimes or just turn our faces really far away. You were always faithful to us, that you always be there, your arms open wide, that we would just come running to you, you're our shelter, you're a strong tower, Father Lord. Um, in you, we find peace, we find hope, we find joy, and um, you keep us safe forever. Uh, I pray that everything will go well today, and that we just bless you for the Lord. Jesus, may I pray? Um, and each suburb should have something prepared, I think. 
Um, well, for the people who have something prepared, just rehearse for it. Um, and we'll have our combined celebration at that time. Okay, we have a special sharing from David. Uh, let's welcome David's place. Hello everyone. Um, so if you guys don't already know, uh, I went to Vietnam for a week. Um, if, uh, Jimmy, if you could pull up the slide on my PowerPoint. Um, so I went to Vietnam and went to Hanoi, which is the capital of Vietnam. And uh, my goal was to really just survey the land. Um, and so I actually have a friend there currently. His name is Jimmy and this is his family. So Jimmy and his family, for two, uh, they left two years ago. And we met through our old company. And so he shared that he wanted to go to Vietnam as a missionary. And then I said, yeah, I want to go to be a missionary too. So uh, we kept in touch the past few years. And he kind of posted me the entire trip. And uh, yeah, he has three wonderful daughters, uh, his wife, Sarah. Uh, Madeline is the oldest. She's on the right here. Uh, sh that's uh, Charlotte on the left. And then that's... Um, Gosh, I don't have a big part. <laughs> uh, I hope I remember. But um, so next to our family, and I just have to spend time with them a lot. Uh, really encourage them. I know it's really difficult living in Vietnam. They're Korean, Korean Americans, uh, so they don't know Vietnamese very well. Uh, but they decided this is what the Lord called them to do, and so that's why they're there now. Um, and yeah, they have. There's of course lots of struggles. Uh, the daughters actually, uh, some of them are homeschooled because of course they can't study over there in with the means. Uh, so they lost, like a lot of the daughters, a lot of struggles are they don't, like they, they're in little school, they don't have that community like they used to have here. But um, it's a sacrifice of course, but they're, they're there now. Um, and one thing that I, he told me, I asked him right after two years, do you regret going? Because right, that's always the big question for a missionary. Do you regret going to Vietnam? And, he, and him and his wife said, you know, this is what God called us to do. And right now where we feel, it's like we feel like we're on the right path. Like no matter how hard it is, right, where they are, they're like, this is what God wants us to be. And we feel so secure. Like we were just singing it just earlier. But they're just like, this is like, this feels right. It feels like we're with God, right? And this is what we're, He wants us to do, we're doing. You know, of course, when God calls us, sometimes we're not obedient, you know, me too, of course. But they just feel like this is right. You know, this is what God wants. We're being faithful, and God's met them in so many ways. So, this is Jimmy and his family. Uh, we can go to the next slide. I just want to show you where Vietnam and Hanoi is. So, it's right there. It's right underneath China. Uh, that's where Vietnam is. And I know it's right there in the yellow dot. Uh, so where I stayed, and hit me and Jimmy, we kind of were stayed. We stayed in this area in Hanoi. It's a uh, it's very new development, and um, there's not a lot of tourists there. So we, we were kind of like more local. Uh, and there's 118 people groups in Vietnam, and only 56 percent, 56 percent are re are unreached. <laughs> right. So there's a big. There's still a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of Vietnamese uh, people groups that are, like, they don't speak Vietnamese. They have like, their own language. They're like in the mountains or somewhere. It's really hard to get to. So my, like, my goal to be, when I go to Vietnam is to reach these people groups, right? To get that number to closer to, of course, 100%, right? So, uh, but the most part, um, Hanoi, um, there's a capital, another big city in the, in, in the south. Uh, it's called Ho Chi Minh City. There's a lot of uh, Christians there. Um, so that's really where the pockets of Christianity is. So if you go to the next slide, I'll show you. Just split up the demographics a little bit. So it's mainly Buddhism, Buddhist, and then the next right after is atheism. And it's a big growing group right now. Um, I, and I think it's, I guess as the younger generation starts to grow, they start to leave. Their, uh, their Buddhist ways. 
but then they just revert to atheism. And even when I was sharing the gospel with my cab driver, he was like an older man, like maybe Uncle Jack's age. <laughs> no, no, but like, just, just give me a reference. Give me a reference. He, he was an atheist too, as well. So it's not just the younger years, but. No, no, sorry, sorry, Uncle Jack. You screwed me. Um, and then Christianity is actually mainly Catholic, actually. It's not, it's not Christianity, our Protestant background. So, uh, 72% and only 18% uh, evangelical Christian. So, um, so yeah, we'll go to the next slide. And so, I'm just going to show you a video of the church that I went to there. It's called HIF. So, uh, Jimmy, if you could like, throw the YouTube video there. There's going to be some videos over here, but I just want to show you what it looks like, you know, there. Uh, so HIF, uh, it's it's a national church, uh, but we have a lot of locals coming in now. So we'll just, we'll just give you an introduction of the church. Welcome to HIF. We love Hanoi and we're glad you're here. HIF is one church with three locations serving over 50 nations. You're welcome to visit any of our services at Westlake, Meading, and downtown. While you're here, we hope you will connect with God and each other. Join a connect group in your area or interest. Build friendships and build up your faith. Participate in our workshops to be better equipped to serve. Whether you stay for a short time or many years, leave a positive impact in the lives of others. Join a ministry team to serve others within HIF. Love Hanoi by loving people at your work and in your community. Participate in an outreach activity through our City Partners Network. By the time you launch out of Hanoi, it is our vision that you will be stronger in the faith and more equipped to serve God wherever you go. Again, welcome to HIF. Thank you for joining us. Now let's take a look at our announcements. Yeah, so that's HIF, and if you get to a sense, it's like, you come here, you're immediately like serving right away. It's like, uh, there's so much need, so much work, uh, you can plug in really quickly in terms of what you want to do. There's like, uh, prison ministry, there's, uh, I think there's like, uh, orphanages and stuff like that, uh, so there's, there's hospitals, there's just a lot of work there. Um, and so HIF, what you do is they try to like, Whoever comes in, they just try to get you up and running as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, there's actually very diverse congregations. There's the Koreans, there's African Americans, there's like all tons of people there. So it's really awesome. I didn't expect that in Hanoi. So we'll go to the next one. Uh, so the Spanish, uh, the, so what we do, in, in the ministry that I was there, um, Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's schedule, he had a certain slots per week, so one of them was the Spotlight English Club, and this is pretty much to bring uh, Vietnamese people into uh, a, a kind of a discussion, right? a, a, just people outside to talk about, to learn English, right? And we use this to bring them into the next one, which I'll talk about later. But this is just um, Jimmy. You just like shoot, just show that video. But we're not going to finish all of it. Just like. Like big, just a big, maybe half of it. Nine, your ability to speak the English language fluently is a gift you can give the rest of the world. Many people learning English are waiting to join a Spotlight Club. You have an opportunity to make a difference in their lives. Spotlight provides all the materials and short training you need for a successful conversation club. As the participants' English level improves, they can communicate with people from other countries, they can share their thoughts in English with new friends, they can improve their English in order to get a good job that supports their family. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm a student at Spotlight. I really like um, this club, uh, Spotlight, because uh, uh, that is a good place uh, for me to uh, practice my English. In here I can meet many friends, like uh, Vietnamese friends and foreigner friends. I can make a, a good relationship with them and uh, share with them my ideas and my view about uh, 
life and uh, I also enjoy some activities in here uh, like some game in club and uh, some events like Christmas or uh, summer events. Uh, Spotlight like is really really cheap. It is the cheapest uh, club I have joined. It is just uh, 50,000 feet and uh, I can learn many things. And uh, this is the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. for so it's just, it's just, they, they, they have a membership there, it's only two dollars uh, to, to join, so that's fifty dollars. Uh, just, we, uh, so this is what we kind of use to bring people into our church, uh, part of it, that's one point. So next one, um, so Jimmy doesn't, of course, doesn't speak Vietnam, uh, uh, but he uses these clubs to kind of like, yeah, to continue ministry and to, uh, to be, you know, still be effective there. Um, we don't have to touch this, but Alpha, we don't have to play this video, but Alpha is pretty much, so after the English club, we bring them to Alpha, and Alpha is where we talk about life, big life questions, right, like where do we come from and things like that, and we just let people talk, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring in a little bit of Christianity in there, but once people start, like, gets more interested, we have another club which is called Beta, which is like the next level, that's where we get really deeper into theology, so uh, that's kind of what we do. Um, and then I was just kind of like exploring like how much does it cost to live there. Uh, nice apartment, one bedroom apartment is like $200, $300 a month. Um, and then like uh, if, you, if you teach English, it's, you get paid probably about $1,500 a month. So you get, you know, it's like that's nothing. And then food's like $3 a meal, so you do that, it's about, I don't know, a few hundred a, a month. So living and eating, it's like really affordable. So. Vietnam, is, that's why a lot of people just come there, not, you, know, you have to be, like, there's a lot of non-Christians that go there just to teach English, and this is what they do. So, um, so that's my time, and I think, um, for me, what really, what really got out of it was, you know, um, God's moving in, in, in so many places in, in Asia, and I feel like, like, at first I was like, I'm going to spend maybe six years to get there, now I'm like, maybe it's shorter, maybe it's like two, three years. Maybe in the last. So it's just God just pushed me to the, you know, he's doing something, he needs workers, and, you know, I shouldn't be, like, taking six years to get there. So um, that's really it. Uh, any questions, you want to let me know. But I was just really encouraged to be there. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you. As you know, David has been preparing. Uh, he's studying seminary and working and prepare for that. So that's, let's pray together now for, for God's guidance. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for you put this heart and burden in, in, in David's heart. But we know that's you who do the calling. We pray that you guide him through this process and we can be partnered with this to then advance the kingdom of God. So Lord, guide him and lead him through this process and let him be well prepared to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, David. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, okay. Uh, I just especially want to point uh, the David, but not David, uh, Paul and Cindy's family here so with, with us. Paul and Cindy's, I know them for a long time. Uh, so I'm going to read that. And Alan, Alan, and um, haven't been seeing Alan for a long time. It's Kelly's husband. We also welcome you. And the Shady Show is here. Shady Show is here. Okay. okay. This is our, our long, my long time my friend from Chinese. I welcome our brothers here with us. So 